Welcome to part one of a lesson on the normal distribution. In this lesson, we'll be talking about the characteristics of the normal distribution, as well as the empirical rule, then we'll take a look at several examples. Sample data can be plotted on graphs, like histograms or box plots, to provide a visual representation of the distribution of the data values. Take, for example, the heights of all women at Phoenix College. If we were to take a random sample of female PC students and record their heights, we would most likely find the majority of the heights would be close to a central value, the mean, with larger or smaller values becoming less and less common. The resulting distribution might look something like this, shown here. Notice how the bar graph does form the shape of a bell-shaped curve. This type of symmetric bell-shaped distribution is more formally called the normal distribution. Because actual data is almost never exactly normally distributed, we say the data is approximately normal. And here are some important characteristics about the normal distribution. The distribution is symmetric about the mean with a single peak. The mean is equal to the median, which is equal to the mode of the distribution. So again, the mean, median, and mode are all in the middle. Because the distribution is symmetric, 50% of the data values are below the mean, and 50% of the data values are above the mean for a total of 100% under the entire distribution curve. Data values farther from the mean become increasingly rare. The graph of the normal distribution is bell-shaped with tapering tails that approach but never actually touch the horizontal axis. And almost all of the area under a normal distribution curve is within three standard deviations of the mean. And looking at the graph, notice how we have three tick marks to the right of the mean median and mode, and three tick marks to the left of the mean, median, and mode. Which means each tick mark is marking off increments of one standard deviation above or below the mean. Consider the distributions shown below. All of these are normally distributed, but each has different variation or spread. For a normal distribution, we use the standard deviation to describe the variation or spread of the data values around the mean. The standard deviation is represented by the Greek letter sigma, shown here. And now let's talk about the empirical rule, also referred to as the 68-95-99.7 rule. The empirical rule states about 68% of the data values will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So if we start at the mean, add one standard deviation to the right, subtract one standard deviation to the left, this interval will include approximately 68% of the data values. And because of the symmetry about the mean, since 68% divided by 2 is equal to 34%, we have 34% on the right and 34% on the left. So looking at the graph here on the right side, this means approximately 34% of the data values will fall between the mean and plus 1 standard deviation and approximately 34% of the data will fall between the mean and minus one standard deviation. About 95% of the data values will fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So starting at the mean, if we add two standard deviations and then go back to the mean and subtract two standard deviations over this interval, we will have approximately 95% of the data values. And again, because of the symmetry about the mean, 95% divided by two is equal to 47.5%, which means approximately 47.5% of the data will fall between the mean and plus two standard deviations, and approximately 47.5% of the data will fall between the mean and minus two standard deviations. Looking at the graph on the right, since 47.5% minus 34% is equal to 13.5%, we can also deduce that there would be approximately 13.5% of the data between the mean plus one standard deviation and the mean plus two standard deviations. And of course, the same on the left. Knowing these percentages can also be helpful when solving problems involving the empirical rule. And then finally, approximately 99.7% of the data values will fall within three standard deviations of the mean, which is shown here. And again, because of the symmetry about the mean, 
99.7% divided by two is equal to 49.85%, which means approximately 49.85% of the data will fall between the mean and plus three standard deviations, and approximately 49.85% of the data will fall between the mean and minus three standard deviations. And then going back to the graph on the right, if we take 49.85%, subtract 34%, subtract 13.5%, that leaves us with 2.35%, which indicates approximately 2.35% of the data will fall between the mean plus two standard deviations and the mean plus three standard deviations. And again, the same is on the left. So once again, knowing these percentages can be helpful when solving various problems involving the empirical rule. So let's take a look at some examples. Based upon the graph of this normal distribution on the right, we're asked to find the mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. Remember, for a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all the same and located at the center, which means the mean, median, and mode are all equal to 81. Next, we're asked to determine the standard deviation. We'll notice how there are three tick marks to the right, three tick marks to the left, and over this interval, we have almost 100% of the data values, and therefore each tick mark represents one standard deviation to the right and the left. And because this interval here is equal to 10 units, we know the standard deviation is 10. Notice 91 minus 81 is equal to 10. So again, just to a review, we often use the Greek letter mu for the mean in the middle. And then to the right, we have plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviations, and plus three standard deviations. And then to the left, we have minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and minus three standard deviations. For number two, the time to complete an exam is approximately normal with a mean of 54 minutes and a standard deviation of five minutes. The bell curve below or to the right represents the distribution for the testing times. The scale on the horizontal axis is equal to the standard deviation, whereas the fill in the indicated boxes. So again, we start with the mean or mu, which is in the middle, which is 54. Next, we have the mean plus one standard deviation, which would be 54 plus five, which is 59. And then we have mu plus two standard deviations, which is 54 plus two times five, which is equal to 64. Notice how the pattern here is we're just adding five at each tick mark, moving to the right. And then mu plus three standard deviations would be 64 plus five, which is 69. Well, if we wanted to, 54, plus three times the standard deviation of five, which is equal to 69. And after the left of the mean, we subtract standard deviations. So mu minus sigma is equal to 54 minus five, which is 49. And then 49 minus five is equal to 44, and 44 minus five is equal to 39. Or again, if you wanted to show more work, for example, for the 44, we could have done 54 minus two times the standard deviation, which is five, which is 54 minus 10, which is 44. And for mu minus three sigma, we could have done 54 minus three times five, which is equal to 54 minus 15, which is equal to 39. But again, notice how we're just adding five to the right, subtracting five to the left. For our next example, we're supposed to use the graph on the right and fill in the blanks. So we're asked to find the mean first. The mean is in the middle, the mean is 79. The standard deviation is going to be this interval here, 90 minus 79 is equal to 11. The standard deviation is 11. Notice how we're adding 11 each time to the right, subtracting 11 each time to the left. And we have three tick marks to the right, three tick marks to the left, which make up almost 100% of the data indicating each interval does represent the standard deviation. 
for part C, 68% of the data values are between which values? Remember, 68% fall between plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, which would be this interval here. So 68% of the data values fall between 68 and 90. Next, 95% of the data values fall between which values? Approximately 95% of the data values fall between plus or minus two standard deviations, which would be this interval here from 57 to 101. It might be helpful to go ahead and label everything as mu plus one standard deviation plus two standard deviations plus three standard deviations. And to the left we have minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and finally minus three standard deviations. And finally, 99.7% of the data values are between plus or minus three standard deviations, which would be the interval from 46 to 112. Let's take a look at one more example. The distribution of weights for newborn babies is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 7.6 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.6 pounds. Use the empirical rule to complete the statements below. Before we do this, let's complete the normal curve shown on the right. So because the mean is 7.6, we know the mean is in the middle. So this is 7.6. Because we have three tick marks to the right, three tick marks to the left, we know the scale is a standard deviation of 0.6. So moving to the right of the mean, 7.6 plus 0.6 is 8.2. 8.2 .2 .2 .2 .2 and 8 plus 0.6 is 8.8. And 8.8 plus 0.6 is 9.4. Moving to the left of the mean, we have 7.6 minus 0.6, which is 7. 7 minus 0 0.6 is 6.4, and 6.4 minus 0 0.6 is 5.8. So again, we have the mean in the middle, and then to the right, plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviations, plus three standard deviations. To the left of the mean, we have minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and then minus three standard deviations. And now let's look at our questions. What percent of the newborn babies weigh more than 8.2 pounds? Well, 8.2 pounds is here. So we're looking for the percent to the right of 8.2. Now we need to be careful here. If we look at this graph here, it's not going to be 13.5 plus 2.35 because this does not represent 100% of the data. So we have to think about this a little bit. We know 50% of the data is going to be above the mean And we also know 34% is going to be between the mean and plus one standard deviation, this percent here. So now we can find the percent for the red area, which would be 50% minus 34%. And 50% minus 34% is equal to 16%. So now we know the percent of newborn babies that weigh more than 8.2 pounds is 16%. Again, we cannot just use this graph and add 13.5 and 2.35, that sum does not give us 16%. Next, the middle 95% of newborn babies weigh between which weights? Well, we know that 95% or approximately 95% is between plus or minus two standard deviations above and below the mean, which for our graph, which for our graph would be between 6.4 pounds and 8.8 .8 pounds approximately 95% of the weights will fall in this interval. So again, it's going to be 6.4 pounds to 8.8 .8 pounds. Next, what percent of newborns weigh less than 6.4 pounds? Well, notice 6.4 pounds is here, two standard deviations below the mean, so we're looking for the percent represented by this area here. And again, we have to be careful. We cannot just say it's going to be 2.35% because this graph does not show 100% of the data. But we do know 50% of the weights or data is going to be below the mean of 7.6. And we also know, and we also know the percent between 
the mean minus two standard deviations would be 34% plus 13.5%, which would be 47.5%. Or well, if we want, we can break this into pieces and say this is 34%, this is 13.5%, and therefore the percent we're looking for that is less than 6.4 pounds is going to be 50% minus 34% minus 13.5% which is 2.5%. Notice it's not 2.35%. And the percent sign is already here, we enter 2.5. So these problems can be tricky. We need to make sure we're thinking about them correctly. Number four, approximately 50% of the newborn babies weigh more than how many pounds? We know 50% of the data is going to be above the mean of 7.6, and therefore approximately 50% of the newborn babies weigh more than 7.6 pounds. And for our last example, what percent of newborn babies weigh between seven and 9.4 pounds? So let's mark those off. Here is seven pounds, and here is 9.4 pounds. Notice seven pounds is one standard deviation below the mean, 9.4 pounds is three standard deviations above the mean. So let's break this up into pieces. Approximately 34% would be between seven and 7.6 pounds, and approximately 34% would also be between 7.6 and 8.2 pounds. Or we could also say 68% would be over this entire interval, plus or minus one standard deviation. The percent between 8.2 and 8.8 .8 is going to be 13.5%. And finally, the percent between 8.8 .8 and 9.4, which is the percent between two standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations above the mean, is 2.35%. So we're looking for the sum of these percentages which will give us the approximate percent between seven pounds and 9.4 pounds. Is 83.85%. So as you can see, some of these problems do take some thought. I hope you found this helpful.